As Trudeau jets off to Tofino in Jamaica while lecturing Canadians to cut their emissions, many experts are claiming that his costly climate policies, specifically the most recent electrical vehicle mandate, are actually harming the climate, the complete opposite of what he constantly claims to be doing. The irony is not lost on Canadians as costs pile onto struggling families with his ineffective carbon tax. Meanwhile, Trudeau can make sure his tan is topped up as he hops on a taxpayer-funded jet. Trudeau loves his bird's eye view of the planet, makes it easier to preach sacrifice to the little people below as they bear the burden of his punishing carbon tax. But Trudeau wants a legacy as a climate leader, evidence be damned. While Trudeau's policies are apparently working against the climate, hardworking Canadians are left asking, if he doesn't take climate change seriously, why should we? Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Canadians are burdened by Trudeau's climate policies, but he only pretends to care while harming the climate. Back in December, Trudeau's government announced a new mandate that by 2035, 100% of new vehicle sales must be electric or plug-in hybrid. And despite many claims that Canada is simply not ready for the sudden change, Trudeau and Environment Minister Stephen Gilbo went through with it anyway, completely disregarding the possibility of the mandate not being viable at all. But they get to say that they are stepping up against climate change, right? And 100% EVs by 2035 does sound fancy, doesn't it? But the truth is that Trudeau's climate policies are all economic pain for no environmental gain. Trudeau touts electric vehicles as a pillar of his climate strategy. He's investing billions of taxpayer dollars into EV battery plants to kickstart a Canadian industry. But like most of his policies, Trudeau's approach is all optics and no substance when it comes to the environmental impacts. EV batteries are loaded with toxic chemicals and rare earth metals. But Trudeau has no plan for disposing of dead batteries when millions of EVs hit the scrap heap. His government admits they have no intention of dealing with this looming environmental disaster, according to Mark Winfield, a professor at York University in Toronto and co-chair of the school's Sustainable Energy Initiative. In fact, no rules exist for proper battery disposal. The rules are non-existent, said Winfield. There is nothing as we talk to agencies on both sides of the border, the federal, provincial, state levels. The materials used to manufacture EV batteries such as cadmium, arsenic, and nickel are listed as toxic under the Canadian Environmental Protection Act and just can't be thrown into a landfill. So these toxic cells full of cadmium, arsenic, and acid will end up leaching chemicals into our soil and waterways, poisoning ecosystems and harming human health. Once again, Trudeau's climate solutions are making the crisis worse through short-term thinking and virtue signaling over prudence. And where will these millions of future dead batteries come from? Many will be imported from countries with atrocious human rights and environmental records like China and Congo. So Trudeau's EV push will enrich abusive regimes while perpetuating unethical mining. Canada's environment will suffer the consequences, yet Trudeau seems put on his high horse. Trudeau wants praise for investing in EV battery plants, but he ignores the devastating impacts of irresponsible battery sourcing and disposal. A true climate leader would couple investments with policies ensuring an ethical and sustainable EV supply chain. But not this prime minister who excels at empty gestures over deep substance. The way Trudeau boasts about EV investments, you'd think batteries sprout pollution-free from the ground. He pretends toxic waste won't pile up by the megaton when his EV fantasy crashes into reality. Once again, Trudeau is more concerned with going green for votes than enacting responsible policies that account for the entire EV life cycle. His priorities are dangerously short-sighted. Like most of the prime minister's schemes, Trudeau's EV push will leave a massive cleanup bill for future governments. Not that Trudeau cares. By then, he'll be lecturing Canadians from some perch free of accountability for the messes he left behind. Similarly, many of Trudeau's programs and policies that he claims are working to help Canadians will not be put into effect until around election time in 2025. And that definitely isn't a coincidence. Trudeau's plot to only appear as if he has the back of Canadians is getting really old. To what end will his political schemes last? And how badly will Canadians have to suffer for it? His carbon tax has driven up costs for Canadians trying to heat their homes and commute to work. Food, gas, and other necessities cost more thanks to Trudeau's regressive carbon tax that hits lower-income Canadians hardest. And for what? Canada's emissions have barely budged under Trudeau. His policies aren't significantly reducing emissions. All the carbon tax has done is make life more expensive. Trudeau banned plastic bags and straws to score political points with environmentalists. But these ineffective bans did nothing to curb emissions. They just created headaches for Canadian businesses and consumers. His other climate regulations, such as his costly carbon tax, will also raise costs without meaningfully having any real tangible effect other than burdening Canadians. Trudeau is layering on red tape and driving up expenses to achieve negligible climate benefits. 
Canadians are left footing the bill for Trudeau's hollow climate posturing. He wants to look like he's taking action while citizens pay more for no progress. For a leader who constantly advocates tolerance and compassion, his policies are anything but compassionate. He's put all the costs on the regular, hardworking Canadians who are just trying to get by. On the other hand, someone who does understand how the people really feel is Pierre Polyev. After seven years of this hypocrisy, Canadians are hungry for a government that will deliver real climate action without bankrupting them. Polyev represents that hope for change. Unlike Trudeau's tax and spend approach, Polyev will incentivize emissions cuts through innovation instead of punishment. He'll make it easier for businesses to develop and adopt green technologies. Polyev understands that Canada needs a strong economy to afford investments in emission reduction. His pro-growth policies will generate wealth to fund the transition to a green economy. After years of sky-high expectations and underwhelming results from Trudeau, Polyev offers a dose of reality. He can deliver a more prosperous future powered by cleaner energy. The question now is when will the election be? And could Trudeau really resign? In a recent year-end interview with City News, Trudeau showed no signs of slowing when asked about the possibility of him resigning. Prime Minister, uh, last question for you just about your leadership. It's not been the greatest year. You've suffered in the polls quite a bit. You have said that you're going to stay on as the party leader heading into the next election for the Liberals. But over the last 12 months, have you ever stopped and thought to yourself about potentially stepping down? And why did you decide to stay on if you, if you did? Well, I think this is the kind of job that you always have to ask, whether you've got the energy for it, whether you're still committed to it, whether you're the right person for the job. And there's no question in my mind that this is a time where everything's in the balance everywhere around the world, whether it's democracy, whether it's the environment and the fight against climate change and the desire to build a strong economy that works for everyone, the fight to be more inclusive, to stand up for everyone's rights. These are all the things that I ran on eight years ago that we've made great strides on in Canada, but there is so much more at stake right now. I couldn't be the person I am and walk away from this fight right now because what I owe Canadians, but mostly what I owe my kids in fighting every day for a better future means that I am here to stand with Canadians and fight for them every day. While Trudeau claims to stand for Canadians and fight for the every day, he seems to be forgetting all the days when Canadians call for him to ease the burden on them and let go of his costly policies once and for all. The clock is ticking, and with Trudeau's plummeting polls, he may have no choice. As the election draws near, Polyev's plain-spoken truths rally fed up Canadians more than any polished speech Trudeau and his team could possibly come up with. Canadians are hungry for substance over stagecraft, and Polyev could very well become prime minister, and that would mean a climate policy revolution in Canada. But Trudeau clings desperately to the spotlight while dismissing Polyev as an extreme radical, yet most Canadians didn't fall for that trap. What we know is that Trudeau overpromised and underdelivered. His climate policies aren't achieving the cuts he claimed they would. All he's achieved is burdening already struggling Canadians as he bounces from vacation to another vacation. The coming election will decide Canada's future. The only question now is what will it be? Well, that's all for now. If Trudeau's expensive climate policies are literally harming the climate and are instead burdening Canadians, while his personal actions contradict his rhetoric, why should ordinary people continue to make sacrifices at his request? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Also, kindly subscribe and leave a like for this video and our other videos because they go a long way in helping our latest content rank. Follow us on our new Twitter account, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support. I will see you in the next one.